This lecture covers Chapter 18, Marketing Concepts. The hospital laboratory, once a significant source of revenue for the institution, is now faced with consumers and physicians demanding higher quality, while the government is reimbursing laboratories less for Medicare patients. The large integrated delivery networks are increasingly demanding cost reductions and managed care organizations are pressuring laboratories to lower fees for service. Because of this new paradigm in healthcare, laboratory managers must be skilled practitioners in marketing and business planning. This lecture covers basic marketing concepts and explores ways to incorporate them into strategic business planning in the laboratory. Following successful completion of this chapter, the learner will be able to define marketing and explain its role in the clinical laboratory, list the elements of the marketing mix, identify and explain the elements of the marketing environment, identify the steps in the marketing analysis process, analyze effective business strategies for a laboratory operation, develop and implement a marketing plan, and describe the regulatory restrictions on marketing in the healthcare setting. Successful companies applying this marketing concept integrate customer needs into their marketing program and increase profit by improving customer satisfaction. Every aspect of their operation has its single purpose value delivery to the customer. Organizational structure of a marketing-oriented laboratory business. In a marketing-oriented laboratory, customers are represented at the top of an organizational chart represented by a triangle. All marketing decisions flow from the customer rather than the product or sales teams. Employees that directly interact with the customer are higher on the chart than upper management who may have no direct contact with the customer. Another business philosophy is the production concept. According to this concept, customers will buy goods produced in adequate volume at a low enough price. The sales concept requires factory products sold by aggressive selling and promotion. They frequently use sales incentives such as rebates and premiums. An example is General Motors selling high volumes of cars. All the activities associated with providing the means by which buyers can purchase a product or service and the process of inducing them to do so are marketing activities. Even though marketing is a business function, as is financing, human resources, or research and development, it does not take place within the confines of a marketing department. This exchange of goods and services for something of value takes place in a market. A market may be defined mathematically as M is equal to Q and P, where Q equals the average quantity purchased, N equals the number of consumers, and P equals the average price paid for a product or service. A market does not belong to the company, but is external. Markets exist for goods and services, for money and credit, for communication and technology services, and for information. Market segmentation, a legitimate business strategy used by companies to create a competitive advantage. It allows marketing manager to break up markets into smaller, more manageable pieces. 
possible because occupants of the market have similar wants, needs, and demands. Respond similarly to market stimuli such as advertising and distribution. Niching is focusing on a specific subsection of a market. The role of marketing in an organization is to achieve its strategic objective by deciding who will sell what, where, to whom, in what quantity, and how. This would include the product quality, brand, packaging, features, or service options. It also includes delivery, training, warranty, repair, and other value-added product or service options, which would provide a competitive advantage to the firm. Critical to the marketing mix is price. It is the amount of money a customer pays for a particular product or service. Pricing options include selling wholesale or retail, offering discounts, sales, and credit. Price is part of the total marketing package offered to the customer, referred to as value. The laboratory market environment today is almost totally cost-driven and may dictate a pricing strategy based on matching the competition's price. Products or services that are purchased strictly on the basis of price are called commodities. Pricing strategy may also be determined by the profit margin imposed on the laboratory by hospital administration. Other laboratories may determine price on a cost plus basis. They determine how much it costs to perform the test and add a percentage to cover overhead expenses and profit. Many laboratories have direct electronic or web-based computer links to their clients' laboratory information systems or LIS or Physician Office Practice Management Systems. Most reference laboratories also have their test directories and other user information available online or on compact disks. Promotional approaches should be linked to what products and what approach is the most consistent with the total marketing strategy. A successful company recognizes the needs and wants of its customers. It keeps a close eye on trends that may provide the company with opportunities to expand its markets. Factors that influence the marketing and business planning of a company include demographics of the market, the existing economic climate, political, legal, and societal structures, available technologies, and natural resources. People make up markets. Therefore, demographic information is vital to the success of any marketing program. The people that make up a market cannot buy products or services without purchasing power. This can be affected by elements of the economic environment, the housing market, savings rate, debt load, interest rates, money supply, inflation, availability of credit, bank lending, and employment levels, all can have tremendous impact on the amount of disposable income or money available to purchase products. The political and regulatory environment can dramatically and quickly affect business. The Clinical Laboratory Improvement Act of 1988, or the CLIA, has placed demands on clinical laboratories. The Occupational Health and Safety Administration, or OSHA, implemented 
new bloodborne pathogen standards in 1993. In 1996, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, formerly the Healthcare Financing Administration, issued guidelines requiring medical necessity documentation for laboratory tests billed to Medicare. The Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health Act, or the HITECH, requires significant changes to the privacy and security of health information that is included in the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or the HIPAA of 1996. HITECH also specifies changes with respect to how the HIPAA regulations and penalties are enforced. HITECH places limitations on both the delivery and content of marketing messages, how personal health information can be used for marketing purposes, and prohibits the sale of personal health information without authorization. The Office of Inspector General, or the OIG, has recently developed a set of essential elements to guide clinical laboratory managers with the development of mandatory compliance plans that protect against fraud and abuse in national health care programs. Compliance plans should be implemented and enforced. OIG recommends that laboratory compliance plans incorporate honest, fully informative, and non-deceptive marketing practices and that marketing information with respect to laboratory services is clear, correct, and non-deceptive. The rapid pace by which technology changes has necessitated large expenditures on research and development to gain or maintain the competitive advantage. Success in the technological environment plays a key role in the success of an institution. Companies need access to these raw materials and available energy supplies to manufacture their products. The market is negatively affected when the cost of natural resources rise as a result of inflation. Marketing research is a crucial part of a marketing program. The marketing research firm will determine what market to target, what services to advertise, where and when, and what the results of the advertising campaign achieved. Market researchers can provide specialized research, such as going into the field and collecting data through interviews, focus groups, and market service. The laboratory diagnostic equipment manufacturers conduct numerous focus groups as part of their design and build process. A typical company may budget 1% to 2% of annual sales to market research. For smaller companies, this may be much less. For a typical hospital laboratory, a budget line for market research may be non-existent. The basic marketing concepts discussed here must be integrated into a marketing plan developed in the context of the organization's overall business strategy. The marketing research process begins by identifying a problem and developing the research plan and methodology. Data are then collected and analyzed. The process culminates with a final report and presentation describing the findings. This also includes developing a marketing strategy, planning and implementing the plan, as well as revising the plan by responding to market forces. The marketing cycle. The marketing process is a continuous cycle because market forces 
and the market environments are changing continually. Revisions to the marketing plan are made in response to these changes. An analysis of market opportunity should begin by an assessment of the market demand. For a laboratory, this would be the total number of laboratory tests performed in a particular market. Marketers performed SWOT analysis of their competitors to evaluate their potential in the marketplace. The five forces analysis model developed by Michael Porter is a framework for analyzing external opportunities and threats. These five forces are the bargaining power of suppliers, the bargaining power of buyers, the threat of new entrants, the threat of substitute products, and the rivalry among existing firms. Porter's Five Forces Model Michael Porter of the Harvard Business School developed this model to analyze the competitive environment that exists external to a company by considering five forces depicted in this figure. Porter identified three generic business strategies for dealing with five forces. Cost leadership, product differentiation, and focus. Cost leadership requires tight cost control, efficiencies of scale, and a structured organization. Product or service differentiation requires a strong research and development function, skilled marketing, and highly skilled labor. The focus strategy is a combination of both cost leadership and differentiation. Regardless of the model, a competitive strategy that fails to produce a competitive advantage is a failure. Michael Porter described the process of creating customer value as a chain. This value chain has four levels of support activity represented by the vertical links in the chain and five primary activities of a firm represented by the horizontal links of the chain. The support activities include firm infrastructure, human resource function, technology, and materials management. Primary activities include inbound and outbound logistics, operations, marketing or sales, and customer service. Both vertical and horizontal links in the chain lead to increasing profit margin. Value creation can also be defined mathematically as value minus cost. A profit is profitable if the value of a product or service to a customer is greater than the cost. Companies can create greater profit by lowering costs or increasing volume. The market analysis and strategic plan are synthesized into a written marketing plan. In addition to the market analysis and business strategy, the plan should include the marketing and sales strategy, distribution channels, and advertising and promotional plans using the concepts of the marketing mix. Marketing restrictions, if they exist, must be included in the plan. It should also contain a realistic budget detailing the cost of implementing the plan. Finally, the plan should contain or reference the mission and vision of the organization. Today's healthcare environment demands a new skill set among laboratory professionals. Successful managers will need to understand basic business concepts such as marketing and finance. 
knowledge and expertise in analyzing marketing opportunities and developing business strategies is essential to adding value for purchasers of laboratory services. Quantitating this value in terms of increased business, lower operating costs, increased revenue, and higher profit is essential to create buy-in from hospital administrators, managed care companies, and third-party payers whose buying power you are trying to attract.